What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the camera, everyone. This is Lee, and yes, today is the last day of the Fuji versus the Pentax. And what better way to cap it off by comparing with the Fuji 8 through 16 versus the Pentax 11 through 18. So, without further ado, let's get going, guys. Now, the Pentax 11 through 18 costs about 1400 USD, whereas the Fuji 8 through 16 costs about 2000 USD. The Pentax weighs about 1.6 pounds, whereas the Fuji weighs about 1.8 pounds. And some quick highlights on both lenses. The Pentax has a removable lens hood. It has an 82 millimeter filter thread. It has a focus clamp. So when you're in focus of your subject, you could turn this clamp on and essentially you're disabling the focus. This is great for astrophotography. The Pentax also has weather resistant. Whereas the Fuji, it is such a beautiful build. It is made out of metal. This thing is gorgeous. However, the lens hood is unremovable which means you need to buy a more expensive filter on this lens so that's just something for you guys to keep in mind and also this lens features weather resistance now they both have nine blades but this is the most important part of this comparison the elements now the pentax has 16 elements the pentax has two spherical elements which is great for distortion control it also has two low dispersion glass which is great for chromatic aberration. The Pentax also features one a spherical element, which is made from a low dispersion glass, which is basically great for chromatic aberration, sharpness, clarity, and color accuracy. And also, last but not least, the Pentax offers their Aerial Bright 2, which is great for ghosting, flaring, and great contrast rendition on strong lighting condition. Whereas the Fuji, the Fuji is really interesting. The Fuji features 20 elements. They have six low dispersion elements six pentax only has two fuji has six they have six low dispersion elements and it is great for their color aberration and that is something we'll see in the test fuji also offers four four spherical elements for distortion control and sharpness control whereas the pentax only offers two so that's something for you guys to take note of and last but not least fuji offers nano gi and is basically for lens flare and ghosting so We'll see all these features in play in my test, but right before we get into my test, let's talk about the bodies we'll be using. Again, I'll be using a Pentax KP, which is a 24 megapixel. It has IBIS, whereas the Fuji is the XT30. There's no IBIS. I'll be using both default settings and everything will be all auto white balance. So without further ado, let it begin guys. So let's first get started with the distortion control. Now, at 11 millimeters and 16 millimeters, I noticed that the Fuji, yes, the Fuji outperforms the Pentax due to their four spherical elements. Definitely that helps out a lot. As you can see, definitely distortion control. It's much better on the Fuji than the Pentax, but with software, you could definitely adjust that. And in real world usage, most people can't tell, but the purists out there can, but in the end, definitely you could definitely adjust this in software so that's something for you guys to know about and so let's take a look at the side-by-side -side comparison of each lens so here's f2.8 on the left is the pentax on the right is the fuji and already you can see that the pentax is having lens flare problems we are shooting right in front of the sun as you can see so let's take a look at the table and already you notice that there is two things that's going on number one the fuji is having highlight transmission issue you are losing a lot of detail when you're shooting outdoors with this lens it seems like at f2.8 whereas the pentax you still have the details yeah it's still there but the pentax has chromatic aberration issues and yes i left chromatic aberration removal off on both lenses because i want to show you guys the raw performance on both lenses let's take a look at the bench the same deal you are gaining more detail on the pentax whereas the fuji you don't have color aberration but you're losing details on the highlights and so i just want to let you guys know Know that and as we look at the back it seems like the pentax at f2.8 you're you're basically having more details in the background and yeah that's pretty interesting so here is f4 right here and already we can see that definitely the pentax still have the same issue we have lens flare right there as we zoom in the table we are still having the same exact issue the fuji is having highlight transmission issues whereas the pentax still have that chromatic aberration issue and that's just something for you guys to take note of and of course the background is more sharper on the pentax more in focus whereas the fuji is all blurred out so that's kind of the characteristic you're getting on the fuji versus the pentax and definitely you get more background clarity on the pentax take a look at 5.6 
and already you can tell that things are sort of evening out a little bit but still fuji has highlight transmission issue you still have more detail on the pentax you have more details at the background on the pentax and if you look at the bottom of the bench seat you are getting the same results again and let's zoom out one more time you're still getting a lens flare issue so here's f8 you are getting lens flare issue on both lenses now the fuji has slight lens issue at f8 and let's zoom in and already you can see that i would have to say that the fuji is catching up a bit but the pentax still remains more detail background still has more detail on the pentax than the fuji the bench seat is about almost the same and yes it's evening out pretty well so far except the background the background pentax has more details on the background so here's the f11 and the fuji still has lens flare issue and so does the pentax but the fuji is slightly smaller than the pentax and once we zoom in we can take a note that both lenses are quite identical at f11 and that's good news for both lenses So here's the next scene. I'm shooting at this bridge and already I can tell you that I accidentally dialed in on the Fuji at 12 millimeters. So I'm slightly zoomed in. Then the Pentax, the Pentax is at 11. And that's just because there is no line for 11 millimeters on the Fuji. So I'm, I'm terribly sorry about that, but uh, we'll still go along with the test, even though the Fuji is slightly zoomed in and with two additional megapixels since I'm on an X-T30. And here are your results. The background on the Pentax seems more detailed and the color seems more richer than the Fuji. The Fuji seems a bit bluish in the background, and I believe that the chromatic aberration on the lens on the Pentax do help out with the silhouette, whereas the Fuji, you don't get none of that color aberration, so it looks a bit faded in the background. Let's take a look at this bridge right here with the color aberration on the Pentax. I feel like it's actually helping out the Pentax, so let's zoom at 3 and one and yes, it seems like for this test right here the color aberration is helping out the pentax a lot is accentuating the edges whereas the fuji don't have any of it and so now the image looks a bit softer there's nothing that can highlight the outlines the silhouette of the structure it looks very faded in these areas and that's good news for pentax the color aberration do help out a bit Keep in mind again, I do have color aberration turned off. So I want to show you guys the raw performance of this lens. So I will show you guys later on, on the before and after with the color aberration removal turned on and off. But for now, let's take a look. You definitely get more detail on the Pentax than the Fuji. I thought the Fuji might actually do a bit better since I'm actually a millimeter zoomed in. And also the Fuji has two extra megapixels but it does not matter. The glass on the Pentax is way better in terms of detail and image quality so far. Let's look at some of this right here. It's the same deal. You're getting more detail on the Pentax. The Pentax is super sharp than the Fuji. Fuji looks fairly soft. Here is F4. Let's take a look again. It seems like we're having the same situation. The Fuji seems to be a bit soft, whereas the Pentax is slightly sharper. Take a look at some of this structure right here. Yeah, you can see more details on this edge right here. So definitely the edge performance on the Fuji is weak at F4. The Pentax is a bit better. Let's take a look at the background. The background, the color is more saturated on the Pentax, whereas the Fuji seems a bit faded. The color aberration on the silhouette in the far back looks much more in depth than the Fuji. The Fuji seems very dull in the background. At 5.6, same story, more saturation on the Pentax than the Fuji. Fuji is a bit dull. Let's take a look at some of these detail marks here. Still, the Pentax is a bit more sharper than the Fuji and collaboration is still there on the Pentax. The Fuji does not have any collaboration issues. At F8, take a look at the background. Let's see if anything changes. I feel like the detail is getting there, but definitely the Pentax has more details in the background than the Fuji, and it's still more saturated color. This rail right here is more detailed than 
the Fuji. Let's take a look at these areas right here. Definitely the Pentax is a bit more detailed than the Fuji. And let's scroll up. So you still get slight chromatic aberration issue at F8, but it helps out the image a bit with the structures. But later on, I'll show you guys the chromatic aberration removal. And yeah, here is F11. Let's zoom in the background. Let's take a look. Already you can see that it does seem like the Fuji is even up a bit, but the color saturation on the Pentax looks much more nicer, much more richer than the Fuji. Let's look at the usual suspects. Already I can tell you that the Pentax do deliver more accuracy in terms of color. Sharpness wise, it seems to be very, very even. Yes, so both lenses at F11 seems to be really, really even. So here's the last scene. I'm aiming at this bench and it's basically a cloudy day. So we won't have a lot of color aberration involved in this test. So let's take a look. And yes, already you can see that the Fuji is slightly softer than the Pentax. The Pentax is basically sharper than the Fuji. And let's take a look at the background. Background is more in focus on the Pentax and definitely the color on the Fuji is very blue. So that's what I'm seeing. And let's take a look at the edge. Definitely the edge on the Pentax is much nicer than the Fuji at 2.8. Yes, it is way nicer on the Pentax than the Fuji. So here's the F4, let's take a look. This is a one on one and we can officially say that the Pentax is sharper than the Fuji at F4. Let's take a look at the background. Things are more in focus at F4 on the Pentax than the Fuji. The Fuji is blurred out just a bit. Um, the colors are very different in this scene right here. It seems like the Pentax is giving you a wide range of colors, whereas the Fuji is soaking it with all blue. Yeah, look at the grass. Burnt grass is right there. That looks a bit greenish, bluish on the Fuji. And the branches here looks a bit a tad blue on the Fuji. Here is F5.6. Let's take a look at the center sharpness again. At 5.6, I believe it is still Pentax. Yes, Pentax is still a hair sharper than the Fuji at 5.6. And as you can see, the background is more focused on the Pentax than the Fuji. Fuji is still blurred out. So that is something for you guys to know about. And on the edges, definitely the Fuji is a hair softer than the Pentax. So here's F8, so let's take a look at the details and yes, we can already see that it's kind of even out almost. Maybe Pentax has a, a hair of sharpness than the Fuji, but let's take a look at the background. I would have to say that the background is more focused on the Pentax and the color science is much more nicer on the Pentax than the Fuji. Fuji is slightly blue. Look at the dead grass. You can tell that the grass is pretty much burnt, whereas the Fuji is giving the grass some life with this tint of blue that's going on in the background. And that's just not true to life at all and here is f11 and crazy enough at f11 everything looks identical yes everything looks identical at f11 except one thing the color yes the food wow yeah i would definitely take the pentax over the fuji at this point because the color on these branches are not that blue in real life that this seems to be like a fall winter day or something whereas this is actually a summer day so by adding the blue it makes it a bit cooler this is a summer day just to keep in mind now for the chromatic aberration issue on the pentax here's the raw performance of the lens here is me turning on the removal of chromatic aberration here's a three to one and as you can see you could definitely remove a lot of the chromatic aberration with a click of a button However, if you zoom in real close, you can still see slight hint of chromatic aberration. So at the end of this test, if you had to choose between the Pentax or the Fuji, and you're shooting landscape photography, which brand would you eventually buy? Now, in my honest opinion, it would definitely be the Pentax because number one, it has IBIS. Number two, it has Astro Tracer. Number three, it has Pixel Shift. Number four, there's a focus clamp. Number five, there's a dedicated space on the lens to wrap a heating device to eliminate condensation. Number six, the color accuracy is much better on the Pentax. And number seven, it's more sharper than the Fuji. Now, as for the Fuji, it would definitely have to be number one, if you're buying a Fuji, it's more wider. Number two, it has better color aberration. Number three, it has better distortion control. Number four, it has better flare control. 
And that's just something that I can only say you could fix in post pretty much. You can fix all that in post. And also, this video is actually a follow up to my 11.318 review that I did months ago. And in the end, I asked the question, should the Pentex people buy the 11.318? And I said, we'll see. And currently, after doing this test with a $2,000 Fuji lens, I will have to say yes. Yes, yes, yes. It seems like this 11.318 has more bite than I thought. And for everyone else that are thinking about buying the Fuji over the Pentax, perfectly fine. That's your money. But in my test, I noticed that the Pentax is definitely offering more value for your money. So to wrap things up, I just want to first off thank all the Fuji shooters out there that helped me throughout this entire process. Thank you guys so much. It was such a great help. And for all the viewers out there, thank you guys for tuning in. And if you like this content, please click like and subscribe. And yeah, definitely I will see you guys in the next one, all right? Take it easy. Peace.